This video will demonstrate and explain the insertion of a peripheral IV cannula. After gaining consent from the patient, begin by sanitizing your hands with alcohol gel and setting up a tray with the equipment needed. This video will begin with a short demonstration and then a more detailed explanation. The equipment that you will need is shown here. Equipment may vary based on hospital, so it's important to familiarize yourself with the local equipment before you begin. Place both yourself and the patient in a comfortable position. Apply the tourniquet and then begin to palpate for a suitable vein. In most cases, a vein that is easily palpable is preferable to one that is only visualized but not palpable under the skin. In most cases for adult patients, a 20 or 22 gauge cannula is suitable for most word-based infusions, though a larger gauge may be required for larger volume infusions or patients requiring a CT with contrast. If you wish to avoid bleeding from the cannula as you remove the needle and apply the bung, a small square of gauze can be placed under the cannula. If you require blood tests to be taken at the same time as the insertion of the cannula, and your hospital policy allows for this, the connector port can be placed on the cannula prior to the bung, and the blood test can be taken. It is important that this is done before the cannula has been flushed with saline. There are many different varieties of IV dressing available in the clinical environment. In this case, strips are first placed on the wings of the cannula before a transparent dressing is placed over the top. It is important to familiarise yourself with the type of dressing in use in your institution, as well as how to put this on effectively. If a dressing is put on incorrectly, this can later require removal which can risk dislodging the cannula. It is important that the transparent dressing allows you to visualize the insertion site so that this can be monitored for signs of infection. To look at this process in more detail, after the tourniquet has been applied and the ideal vein has been palpated, the skin is sanitized with an alcohol swab using circular motions. Allow the skin to dry as you remove the cannula from its packaging and assess its components. Ensure that the bevel is facing up and in this particular model that the wings have been extended. You will notice me use my non-dominant hand to pull tension in the skin and stabilize the vein, while the ring finger of my dominant hand allows me to stabilize my hand against the patient's arm. Insert the cannula at approximately 30 degrees until a flash of blood is seen in the rear chamber. At this point, the cannula is inserted a further one millimeter before the angle is dropped flush with the patient's skin and the plastic cannula is pushed off and into the vein. You will see me use my non-dominant hand to apply pressure above the cannula to reduce bleeding as the needle is removed, placed in the sharp spin, and the syringe with saline is applied. At this point, the tourniquet is removed and the cannula is tested with a small flush of saline. Any pain or resistance at this point may indicate that the cannula is not in the vein and should not be used. Once this has been confirmed, the dressing is applied as normal. It is important that the insertion of the cannula is now documented in the patient's notes and that the insertion site is regularly assessed for signs of infection. This has been a demonstration on the insertion of a peripheral IV cannula. Thank you for watching.